Hello, Salesforce Ohana Walters954 here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take a GitHub repo that has been set up for SFDX or a Salesforce project and actually get it on your local machine and get it hooked up to your trailhead org or your playground or whatever org you want to get it hooked up to. So for this example, I have the Salesforce War project that we are working on for build together version I think it's two, no, version one. This is the second iteration. I did the versioning very weirdly, but anyways, we're doing this for a build together project. It's a project that I've set up for some of the people to get some hands-on experience with doing an integration. And it is a repository that already has a SFDX project set up for it. So what you need to do, either if you're working on um, build together or you are trying to just follow along for, you, you'll need to follow these steps to get everything set up. So to do this, what you need to do is come to the GitHub repository for those that are doing the build together. You've probably already forked the repo. We can see over here, if you're on build together, you fork the repository for yourself, but let's say you've either created this or you're on somebody else's, it'll work kind of the same. So either go on your fork, or if you want to use my exact repository, you can use, do it this way. But if you're doing build together, definitely use your forked repository because that's yours. So anyways, what you want to do is we want to clone this repository and bring it down onto our local machine. So to do this, I'm going to come and hit this green uh, button here, which does a drop down, and this gives you a URL to your repository. So this one is mine. It's going to be my URL. Um, but if you forked it, obviously you want to copy your fork one. And now I'm going to come back into my IDE and you can do this many different ways. I'm just going to show it in VS code because everybody that's doing build together should be using VS code as well. And really quickly, let me just show you all that. I'm going to delete this file. And this is, that was my original Salesforce war files that I used to create that repository. And this is the beauty of using version control like Git and GitHub to actually make these things come to life. So now let's go over to our terminal and we need to pick a location where we want to bring our files into. So now let's hit this little folder. I'm just going to copy this path. And this is this is the location that I want, but you can you can put it anywhere you want it to be. And this is just a, a short shorthand way of me doing it. So we're going to type in CD for change directory. And I'm going to put in that long path. So I'm automatically in that folder there. So if I do CD and put that path in, I am now being brought to that location. And then we see all of the folders that I have in here uh, that I've created. So a bunch of different stuff, but we are not seeing anything related to Salesforce war. Now, what we want to do is actually bring those files into our local machine and we need to do git clone. And I think I'm gonna have to jump back in and grab that paste, copy this file in here, jump back into my terminal and I'm doing git clone. So what this is doing is it has now reached out to GitHub where my repository is stored. It has brought it into my, downloaded it. So you can see all like this downloady stuff. It has downloaded it into my local machine and it has put it into a file somewhere or a folder somewhere. So we'll navigate to that folder. Um, and if I type LS here, which just displays all the different folders, we can see that Salesforce wars is in here. So one way, one other thing that I can do is go to like open folder, uh, documents, Salesforce, Salesforce mentor, and click select folder. So now it has opened up that repository that I had just created. And the way that we'll know it hundred percent is I'll click on the readme and we can see all of the readme document or the, the code that makes up the readme. So all of this looks great. Um, the next thing we need to do is actually connect our repositories together. So what we're going to do is wait here for the uh, extensions to load. So I may actually pause for a second here. And we can see now at the bottom here, a bunch of my extensions have finally loaded in, like give it, give it a minute and we can see like it's saying a couple different things. 
um, about like some of my orgs starting to expire. So for me, it has already connected a default org for it to be processed on. But for you, if you if this is your first time setting up a Trailhead or, or or doing any type of development in SFDX and VS Code, it may not have anything down here. It may say you need to authorize an org. So if you click this button, it will pop this screen very similarly. You won't have all of this stuff down here, but you'll be able to authorize an org, a dev hub, create a scratch. All of these things is, is what you'll need to, um, w to click on to actually synchronize this code into your dev hub or into your, your org, your, your trailhead org. So what you want to do now is if this is your first time you want to do authorize an org, if it's a playground org, it is a production org, or you can just do the normal log in the default one. If it's a sandbox, you want to do a sandbox. Name it. So I like to name mine something like trailhead dash, uh, the name of my trailhead instance. A lot of times they're like cunning wolf or something like that. And then uh, what it's going to do now is pop the uh, Salesforce login page for you to log in. So once you log in, I'm not going to do it right now, but once you log in, cancel that, it's going to uh, say that authentication worked right now. It's saying it failed for me. And then down here, it's going to show the org, the name of the org that you just did for me. I'm going to jump down into my probably I'll just, I'll just select this one, the cunning narwhal. Um, and now you see it's authorizing and now down here, there's the trailhead dash cunning narwhal has been selected as my SFDX. Um, everything is synchronized between SFDX and my playground org. So now I can do work. I can, I can come in here and create classes. So do, if I do control shift P apex and apex class, there we go. Create apex class. I can hit that. We want to name our class. I'm going to call this Star Wars controller. And then we select the folder. All of that looks fine. And if I wanted to save this, I can right click and deploy this source to uh, my org. As this is rolling through there, what, what's happening now is it's, it's actually saving this to my uh, Salesforce org whenever it finishes processing. And then we have a couple things over here in my GitHub uh, repository that it's showing, you know, green because these have not been saved to my GitHub repository since they're brand new. Uh, I'm going to commit and save these. So first class for integration. Let me save that one and push that change up. So this change is still running. That's fine. I'm also going to do another con command with control shift P and I'm going to open my default org. So hopefully both of those can run at the same time and my org is not busted or anything like that. So it's opening my org up, which is great. That's another really nice and handy one for you. The other thing here, let's see if this it looks like it has saved. So just to triple check, if we uh, go into our apex classes inside of our org, we should see that apex class that has the, oh, I've got a lot in here. What do we call this Star Wars controller? So here it is, our Star Wars controller. It is empty and it was created just recently. So that's how you kind of get everything connected with VS Code and you're able to uh, see those changes. And now just, uh, I guess, an additional quick tutorial, we're able to push our first integration class to our um, GitHub repo so that anybody else that's forking this or getting this will be able to get this information. So I hope this was helpful in giving a, an overall explanation of how the process kind of works when you're working with an existing repository. And if it's not clear, definitely leave a comment down below. Or if you do it a different way, let me know how you do it. Uh, if you're looking to either be part of Build Together or just learn Apex in general and more of the development side of Salesforce, definitely check out these videos and the links that I have down below for my Apex course that will go over a lot of this and more. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Walters954, and remember, I believe in you.